The basic procedure for creating a rectangular array in AutoCAD LT is pretty straightforward. Start the command, select your objects, specify the number of rows and columns, and finally set the size of the array. From there, you could adjust even more settings, but instead I'll finish the command and then select the array again, because the real power of an associative array is in how easy they are to edit and adjust. Let's start with the grips. With this grip, I can change the row spacing, and I can use this one to change the column spacing. When I hover over this grip, though, a menu appears. It's got more than one option. I could change the number of rows, the total distance covered by the rows, or the angle axis, which creates a skewed array. Similar options are available for the corresponding column grip. And if I choose an option from the menu, then change my mind, I can press Control to cycle through the different options. In the bottom left is another multifunctional grip. Move just relocates the entire array, while Levels enables you to add layers in a third dimension, above what you see on screen. Chances are you won't need this option, unless you're working with a file from AutoCAD that contains 3D elements. The last grip, in the top right, essentially combines the column and row grip functions. I can change the count for both at the same time, or change the overall size of the array. I could also accomplish all these functions using the Contextual Ribbon tab instead. It has input fields for the number of rows and columns, and for their size and spacing. There's a Levels panel too, but you probably won't need it most of the time. There's also an option to add incremental height to your rows, but again, unless you're working with a drawing that has 3D elements, you won't need that either. The options at the end of the tab are where the real fun starts. Changing the base point adjusts where the row and column axes intersect relative to the object. Instead of the midpoint of the table, I'll use the lower left corner. You can see that the grips move to reflect the new base point, and you'll see why this is important in a minute. With Edit Source, I can select an item, and any changes I make to it will be reflected in every instance in the array. Maybe I want three chairs at every table instead of two. Notice that the Array tab has been replaced by a smaller Save and Discard Changes panel, and when I do save my changes, I have to select the array again to get the tab back. Replace Item is a way to swap out some instances in the array without affecting the overall associativity. For example, I want to change some of the long tables to pairs of smaller tables. I'll first select the objects that I want to add to the array. Next, I'm asked for the base point. The point you pick will land on the axes of the rows and columns, so you see how it's related to the base point of the overall array. To get my tables to line up, I'll pick the bottom left corner of the new table as the base point. Then I can click on individual items in the array to replace them. There's also a Source Objects option here, which lets you replace every item in the array at once. Replace Item isn't the only way to manipulate individual components of an array. You can also hold down Control and click on an item to select it. Then you can use its grip to move, rotate, scale, or mirror the object. You can even delete individual items after Control selecting them. After all of this, the array is still associative. You can still change the column and row count and spacing. Items that were individually replaced or modified go along as well. If you want to put the array back to its original state, use the Reset Array option at the end of the Contextual tab.